So if you have a passion for red light therapy and want to geek out on some of the more technical terms, or you've heard about the Move Plus Pro from a company called Kineon, then you're going to love this video. I spoke to Forrest Smith, the co-founder of the company that produced this device, and we go deep not only on the product, but all things photobiomodulation. We look at dosing, we look at what the light is doing deep in a joint, we look at why they've chose to use a combination of LEDs and laser, why a small product like this may actually be better suited than a large panel, and we also geek out on some science and some upcoming products that these guys are working on. It's quite a deep dive, but it's really insightful, and I'm sure you'll get some excellent takeaways. Now, before we get started, I do need to mention that all the resources, all the products, all the links that we talk about in this video, they'll all be down below so you can check them out. The company have also given me a discount code and a discount link. So if you do want to buy this product, you can check that out below. Finally, Forrest and I jumped straight into some rather technical topics. So I do recommend heading over to Kineon.io and having a look at their product and what it does, uh, just so you've got a bit of context before we, like I said, get into the heavy details. Hey, so welcome Forrest. It's so good to uh, finally be able to have a chat to you. I'm, I'm looking forward to taking a deep dive into your background, photobiomodulation, and also this product of yours. So firstly, welcome, and how are you doing? It's a, uh, it's a crazy, crazy uh, time of year, time of week. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's always busy for some reason, but uh, super <clears throat> grateful to be here with you, and, and uh, thank you for the invite, and really, and uh, also looking forward to, to diving in on this. Yeah, cool. It's going to be exciting. So first up, I need to ask, how do you pronounce your company's name? Is it Kinon? Kinon? Uh, uh, yeah. How do, how do you pronounce it? So we pronounce it Kinion, and it's it's from the Greek for movement. Uh, we actually started the company as a as a different name, um, and it was actually revived with two eyes and no e at the end and all this. Um, and we get a cease and desist uh, letter from a company that spelled revive in a different way and didn't like us kind of honing in on that, and so. Um, yeah, we've we've uh, we ended up changing it in about a two week time period and rolling it out, and we've been really happy with that because I, I think you know it's, it's um, core to a lot of what we're trying to communicate with our our users and get them back into movement and and uh, healthy patterns and just kind of a, an empowered uh, way of going about life versus being stuck with kind of chronic pain and inflammation. So that's that's uh, it's, it seems to be a pretty good fit. Very cool, Kenyon. Well, I'm glad I asked that because yeah, I I would have I would have totally messed it up if I. Had to correct myself. Um, so your background, I want to know a bit more about you. Like we have spoken offline previously, and yeah, you, you, I mean, you've got quite an interesting background. Tell, let's tell the viewers a bit about that, but also how you ended up in this industry with a photobiomodulation red light therapy uh, device. Sure. So um, I actually uh, studied uh, Chinese in high school, and. Uh, I ended up moving to, I, I went to um, my university at Georgia Tech, which is a kind of engineering and, and technical school, where I was still, still studying, uh, minoring in Chinese. But I started my first business uh, when I was about um, 20, I think, in, while well, I was still in university. And um, I, I kind of knew that that's what I wanted to do, was start my own businesses and build them. And so uh, when my company got big enough to support me and I could kind of... Uh, go run that full time. Uh, I moved over to China and, um, I've been kind of starting and, and, uh, running, um, startups in, in different segments, uh, since. And I think one of the things that's a little bit different about Kinion, um, compared to some of my earlier businesses is the fact that, uh, we've, and this, this comes from both myself and my, my business partner, Tom, who's in the UK, uh, we, at this point of life, so both of us were in early 40s when we met and kind of or late 30s, early 40s and, and kind of in a, in a um, phase of life where we wanted to do something that that contributed a little bit more from a um, kind of a mission statement. And, and um, I would say a mission driven company is a reasonable way to, to describe that versus necessarily just the commercial side. I mean, you do have to make things from a company standpoint stand on its own. So it has to have a certain amount of commercial viability to be able to to kind of carry itself. But um, our, our goal and what we spent our first months together doing was building a, a mission statement that really held us accountable and um, was measurable. So it wasn't just pie in the sky. And what that came down to was making the largest impact uh, in a quality of life that we can for the largest number of people we can. Um, and that's how we came to to start into photobiomodulation because we felt there's a big gap between kind of what's available from a clinical level at, uh, and a technology level and what the technology can do for pain and inflammation 
versus the adoption. And what we're seeing from the adoption was really limited by the the cost and the the um, a lot of friction uh, points in in the adoption for the technology. So that's where we've made our assumptions that we can we can hopefully with our design teams and engineering teams come in and, and build a product that's going to lower those friction points and lower the costs and, and help people adopt something that gives them an alternative to pharmaceutical solutions. Very cool, very cool. And you have you have done that exactly. You've got the uh, the Move Plus Pro. I, I have it here and it's a little charging device. I've been playing around with it the last week or so. It is pretty neat. It's it's a lot. I've tested a lot of red light therapy devices over the years um, and this is quite unique. So uh, yeah, tell me a bit, a bit more about this. Uh, what is it? How do you come up with this particular design? How is it so unique? And most importantly, what does it do? So the, the key for um, for successful kind of photobiomodulation treatment, uh, regardless of what you're trying to treat with people, is the the dosing. It's kind of, um, it's one of the things that's that's kind of uh, similar to pharmaceuticals in that it, it works on a biphasic dose curve or the Arnschild's curve, where it's that, that kind of sine wave curve where it, you know, more and more dose benefits with better and better outcomes until you hit the peak. And then after that, it starts coming back down. So um, you really need to dose effectively with the um, with the right wavelengths, the right power levels. And, you know, one of the ways that we've approached it, I think that's a little bit different than a lot of people in this space is it's interesting to look at the outputs from an irradiant standpoint or a power density or, or a number of different kind of, of the engineering metrics. But one of the things that we've tried to do is we've made the assumption that outcomes that people are looking for, while they may map uh, somewhat to those those metrics are going to map more heavily to internal or physiological uh, adaptations or, or triggers that we're trying to um, trying to use from a therapy standpoint or an intervention standpoint with the light. And so what we've done is we started off in the same place as everybody else uh, with these kind of spreadsheets of um, you know how much how much irradiance or how much power density are we providing with these different wavelengths at these different, uh, at, at the surface level or at the emission level. And what we've done since then is that's kind of morphed into, a into Python models and in, in a longer term into kind of these, these more complex light distribution models. And the assumptions that we've made are, are a little bit more in line with the physiology, uh, which is you have at different depths of tissue, um, different tissue distributes light differently. So if you hit it with infrared or, or with uh, different wavelengths, it's going to redistribute that further into the tissue in different ways, um, but they're they're all mainly uh, uh, possible to to mathematically model. And so that's what we've done is we've gone back and put tens of thousands of hours into uh, modeling these with the the uh, kind of state of the art technology for modeling how light distributes, and then targeting at these different depths of tissue these reservoirs of photoacceptors that are going to essentially provide the the most robust and and best outcomes for the users possible. And I think the um, the results that we've seen from our physiological testing and then also just from our, our day-to-day users providing feedback on what their experiences have been have really justified this this methodology that we've used to go design the uh, the dosing model that helped us kind of really focus in on what what we've done with the design for the product, which as you notice there is, is three modules. And so one of the things that we've, we've tried to do with those modules is we found that hot spotting is one of the issues that um that you see with uh so th- there's a few different issues but hot spotting is one that you see with professional devices quite often because they're they're people will think oh it's a class two or a class three or a class four laser which means it's more powerful which means it's better um but it's it's kind of like thinking about uh morphine as like i just need a bigger needle uh and and that's not always the case what you what you need to have is something that's in balance with what the the treatment and dosage that's uh, proper for it. And we found almost the exact opposite, which is on each of our modules, we had to break up. Initially, we had larger lasers on there. Um, and what we found is that by breaking those lasers into smaller ones, it's more cost. Uh, it's more costly for us to build a product, but the, the outcomes for our users were miles better by being able to break those. So the lasers means that you're still going to be able to penetrate um, reasonably well. It's a, it's a very low angle of emission. It penetrates into the internal tissue, but instead of using one of those, we've actually got ten lasers on every module and three modules. So you've got thirty lasers um, in in these. So dosing, kind of overlapping those around tissue internally, means that without hot spotting, you can actually bring a very 
reasonable dose to that internal tissue, which is the harder part to, to dose. And, and again, why people want to use those class three, class four kind of big needle for the morphine type, uh, approaches, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, um, yeah, my, my, my overdrive here. Cause there's so many, so many ways I want to take this. So, uh, let's look at the dosing first. All right. So you talked about, uh, biphasic dosing and potentially not necessarily overdosing, but overdoing it to the point where you're not getting returns or you're not getting the benefits you're seeking. So this is something that's like, I'm trying to wrap my head around. Uh, my team has spent hours and hours looking at It's tricky because yes, there are thousands of studies out there on photobiomodulation, but a lot of them are, um, you know, single point treatment areas with lasers and stuff. And, uh, you know, trying to use that data and see how it would work in a large panel. Like it all gets messy and stuff, right? So so what's what's your understanding here? Is is there an upper limit? Uh, how did you find the optimal dose? Like you mentioned some some models and, and formula, formulas you've created. In that what, what's what, I'd love to unpack this a little bit more with you. Sure. So essentially, um, the first thing that we noticed was that the the metrics that are used for this most often are things like watts or milliwatts per centimeter squared. And while those give you a range of what's going to be successful, it's like trying to sweet spot something without having the exact data that you need to be able to, to do that. And so what we've, what we've done is instead is say, all right, that's going to give us the right range. Let's, let's keep, let's make sure that we're, th we're within that range. And that's going to like, with our overlap, we're going to kind of get to that same space for the internal issue. But, uh, let's, let's take a look at things like how, how many photons will we like to deliver at uh, you know, X depth, because we believe that, you know, in, in skin tissue or in blood tissue or in muscle tissue, there's different photo acceptors that we're targeting. And then we have different. So for example, we do actually use led. We had the option of using all laser, but we do use led, um, for our red, uh, uh, emitters. Um, but with that said, we don't use the normal 120 degree red. We, we pull those down to a 30 degree because with the, the, they have impacts on the, the skin and blood, which is kind of more towards the surface. What we, what we use the infrared for, um, and the infrared emitters are, um, a type of laser that they call, uh, vertical cavity surface emission lasers or VIXELs, which is, uh, essentially a, a, um, an elliptical, uh, 10 by 20 degree output, but it's collimated light and it, and it just penetrates a lot better, particularly because it's also, uh, infrared. So. Those are actually treating um, tissue that we're, we're like these pockets of uh, photo acceptors that we're trying to treat in, for example, synovial fluid in your joints, mm -hmm. uh, in, in your muscles, in essentially in soft tissue that's internal, where we use the red to bring additional blood flow. And um, there's a couple other things you can do at the at the surface from a wound healing standpoint. Um, but essentially, it's it's uh, they're, they're kind of um, we're trying to pair these so that we treat. You, we use the red to treat the more surface uh, uh, kind of tissues and, and photo acceptor reservoirs, and then the deeper tissues we're using the lasers for, for penetrating. Too. Yeah. So, so for viewers out there that may not know, um, yeah, there are there are LEDs in here and lasers. It's pretty neat. I haven't I haven't seen that before in a device, a consumer device that I've tested. So I get that now. So that that because that was going to be one of my questions, like why LEDs and over lasers and why not use both? So that does make sense. But then going back to the dosing topic, then so. You've got the LEDs in there with the red for more of the surface level sort of treatment, uh, you know, not penetrating as deep. You've got the lasers with the near infrared getting deeper into the tissue. All that makes sense. How do you how do you um, find a dose that's that's equal in terms of one device? Because uh, a bit of context here. So like I've looked at a lot of research, and yeah, like for for surface level treatment. From what I've studied, uh, you don't need as as much energy, as much light, you know, shorter treatment times, all that jazz. But then, if you want to get deeper into the tissue, yeah, you're going to need those higher energy um, uh, outputs, or and or a longer treatment time. So, how how have you married these two into the one device? Because obviously, you you're not choosing between. Red, you're not saying today's a a red session because I want to treat this, you know, like this little sore. Uh, or today is a, you know, I've got arthritis in my knee. I, I want to treat that. So it's, it's, it's an all in one. How have you, yeah. How have you married them together and came up with a, a dosing treatment plan that, that ticks both boxes. So what, what we did with the original ones, when we started building out the more complex dosing plans was we looked at kind of, so we looked at the type of, of, uh, 
So on the surface level, we're doing primarily blitz. We're looking at heme proteins. There's there's a number of different photo acceptors that you can you can target at different depths, but um, essentially for the the more surface areas, we're looking at uh, basically number of photons delivered uh, to these reservoirs, and then we make assumptions about the size of the reservoirs from a a, uh, a heme protein standpoint and an access of that light because every every kind of step that you go internally from a tissue standpoint, you actually reduce um, a, a large amount of the the, uh, the light that's delivered as well. So th there is a balance there and it's taken a lot of, again, that's, that's uh, there, there's a lot of math in it and it's, it's uh, uh, the, the modeling of it um, is, is not simple, but it comes down to essentially for us, what's, what's been most effective for being able to predict positive outcomes for it is mapping photons delivered to these these kind of mapped reservoirs of uh, a certain type of um, photo acceptor at a certain depth. And so we, we've basically tried to, we and then we back out the math to, to build the engineering specs for how to dose those from a, a um, uh, light output, uh, you know, the, the, their, what you're kind of, what you call the, the pulse width modulation characteristics. So uh, frequency, duty cycle, power level, um, and wavelength essentially. Um, and that's, that's, and then again, we've tried to build in a feedback loop. This is the other thing that I think it's, it's a little bit different than what's, you know, how it's uh, kind of typically approached is, um, we're also, uh, we have some friends who are, are doing, uh, so, and this is a really cool technology thing that's coming, coming down the pipe. That's, uh, I, I think going to change how we, how we measure a, a number of things to make training and recovery and different uh, biophysical markers, but when you can measure things, uh, in a time sequence, um, so one of our, our good friends is at, uh, at a company called Innox and they're, they're doing, um, nitric oxide, uh, sensing at a, at a blood level. And you can do that at a, in a time sequence, uh, which is really different than doing it from a blood draw, because when, when you're looking at things like, um, the light therapy, if you did a blood draw before and after, like the, but you don't see, you could see peaks and that you could be in a peak or a valley, or you could be kind of right in the middle. You don't know. So when you have the time sequence from things that you can do from an optical sensing standpoint, you can actually build a feedback loop and say, here's what we're impacting. And, and as an example, one of the things that we, we target with the, uh, infrared light is hemoglobin and we reduce the affinity of hemoglobin for nitric oxide. So you dump a bunch of nitric oxide, uh, and, and it's like, one of the things that I think is is really interesting about the the math and the the kind of uh, biochemistry of this is that there's a couple of points where where you see these heme proteins where uh, he, where oxygen and nitric oxide are competitive for binding sites and hemoglobin is one of them. So when you dump a bunch of hemoglobin uh, out of your uh, so when you dump a bunch of of uh, sorry nitric oxide out of your hemoglobin, then you also so one thing you do is you dilate the the uh, the blood vessels which is pretty commonly found in, in uh, the literature around photobiomodulation. The other thing is that those those hemoglobin are now open for carrying more oxygen in that area. And so you start seeing that oxygen, you start seeing more effective use of energy in that in that area from a couple of different kind of additive uh, uh, methodologies from a signaling standpoint uh, from the biochemistry. So it's, it's you know, and, and that that's not the, like everything in the body, it's, it's such a great and, and complex system, but everything in the body is both a kind of, delivery system and a signaling system and a, and a feedback loop. So whenever you're impacting these from a signaling standpoint, there's, there's a number of things that are happening downstream that you'll impact as well. That's, and that's something we do from, from a oxidative stress. We see really good benefits from oxidative stress and, and, um, uh, kind of, um, energy management, I guess, is, or, or uh, mitochondrial impacts, uh, and, and signaling with the, the nucleus of your, of your cells. Long story short, you're you're we're targeting a few different things uh, that that uh, have that work synergistically together, and so that's that's kind of um, how we've measured it to date is is just photons delivered to these types of molecules. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's fascinating. You obviously have spent a bit of time uh, looking into this stuff. It's, it's quite impressive. So let's um, let's come back to sort of a take home consumer uh, question, right? So let's say I have your device and I don't know, I've, I've sprained a knee or I've got a bit of knee tendonitis or something like that. I get your device on the back. There's a, a bunch of different time, um, session times, five, 10, 15 minutes. Walk me through it, just layman terms. 
what I'm going to do with your device and and how often I should be using it and, and how it works. Well, not necessarily how it works because we have covered that, but yeah, just, just in terms of how I'm using it because a lot of my followers, again, are used to just a panel where you just stand in front of it, you know, five minutes, turn around, 10 minutes. This is different. Um, yeah, could, could you explain that a little bit more? Absolutely. So you, you can change, actually, our original device, you could not change the time on it. And we had a bunch of, what, one of the things that's, that's interesting about the device is we've opened it up for our community to provide a uh, feedback on uh, the device for us because this is this company is, um, although we've been, both of us have been building companies for a while, my partner and I, um, this is our first direct-to-consumer company. And so we actually launched with a crowdfunding launch first with the idea that we should build a community because their feedback is going to drive the best out of the product. And so we're, we're going to be able to go um, kind of dive into the science and support what they want, but we really want to know what their user experience is. And if they're not getting what they need out of it, then, you know, we, we can help to uh, adapt the product to what they, what they really want. Um, and so one of the things that we've done uh, and the changes from our, our original product to this one is uh, make it changeable from five to 10 or 15 minutes. And um, the original product, you had to kind of push the button and it would go five minutes and then uh, you'd have to push it a couple more times to go for 15. What we found is that um, many of our our users were getting their best results at 15 minutes. Uh, and this is this is kind of what we've seen from a, a dosing model, but we wanted to reduce the uh, uh, kind of barrier to entry because it's so much better for you to do five minutes every day if you're going to do that versus 15 minutes once a week. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So, so 15 minutes, if you're using this 15 minutes, like how much light... Uh, do, do you do you measure it in joules in terms of the irradiance? Is, is like do you have the figures around that? Like how many? What, what's the joules per centimeter square figures? Do you, do you know those? I mean, is it? I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, again, most of that we've we've backed into those numbers because people ask us for it a lot. Um, but really, what what drove our design for this was photons to kind of um, different molecules at different depths. But I, I can yeah, I'll get you a no, link up. I'm just oh, I'm just curious. So like. So it's not necessarily like you, you found, okay, uh, 25 joules per centimeter squared is with these wavelengths, 660 or whatever it's going to be, is going to be the most beneficial for, for you know, knee, health, uh, knee healing and from arthritis or whatnot. Um, and that's what 15 minutes does. It's, it's not necessarily like you figured out that way. It's just that you've, you've found, uh, based on the science you've looked at and also user um reports you found that 15 minutes is, is seems to be a really good treatment for... right. and, and actually the, the original uh kind of uh dosing so that that came from our our models and i again i can kind of send you over the the basis for our models that uh that we've used for this you can see these type of things for light distribution and you can run them through things like matlab and, and different mathematical uh mm -hmm. modeling software um and I, i'm sure I, I can we can get the team to send you over some of these as well so you can kind of play with it too um, but that's, that's where those came from. Um, and the 15 minutes, uh, we did back out numbers for joules because we've had this kind of the, the more, the irradiance and, and, uh, kind of optical power density, uh, number, uh, uh question a number of times. So I, I can see yeah. over those details as well. Yeah. I, I just know, I mean, it's, it's a common metric we see in the space, um, and it allows people to easily, you know, compare products and whatnot, but also to help them do some of those same calculations, you know, if they get the panel that's putting out x and then they get another panel that's putting out 2x you know it's, they can run some basic math right but the, this is interesting because it's it's a more focused treatment and that's the other question i was going to ask next then so all right let's say you have you have your three of these uh in the in the strap and the little harness that it comes with and you have it on your knee and you're doing 15 minutes that light is quite concentrated would you recommend then shifting shifting the pods you know a few inches and doing another 15 minutes like like because it's not getting that full coverage of the knee, right? It's just targeted. Is that by design, or or could it be improved? Like, could we see the next generation come out with ten of these little? I'm calling them pods. I don't know the technical term, but you know what I mean. Do you see where I'm yeah, yeah. trying to ask you? One hundred percent. So, so with knees, actually, the knee is what we started with because uh, we have uh, all of our founders have played sports kind of our entire lives, and and a lot of it's rugby, and uh, just end up with bad knees from this, and so. What, do you, what we're trying to do with these, though, is is that uh, it's targeted internally. So when you're when you're targeting the knee, um, one of the things that we suggest for our users, and, and I, I say the knee, but it's it's with most joints, is that you have a uh, a joint capsule, and then inside that you have synovial fluid. And when you have um, kind of an old injury, or you've had traumatic damage to that 
uh, that whether it's meniscus or ACL, anything that's kind of uh, bordering on that that uh, that joint capsule, what will happen is you'll have you you can develop chronic, and most people do develop chronic inflammation, even if it's not something that's driving a, a huge amount of pain. Um, it, it actually causes an earlier onset for osteoarthritis, um, and it can degrade the cartilage faster and a number of different things. But that that chronic inflammation, the chronic inflammatory markers that are inside uh, that synovial fluid, can be reduced with the uh, the the light and laser therapy. And so we're trying to target um, essentially at the knee line and behind the knee line to be able to get the light inside that synovial fluid, uh, because that's the majority of where treatment from a inflammation reduction and pain reduction standpoint will help people from a, a knee um, a knee pain uh, perspective. Um, and again, that's, I say, but that's, that's mostly joints. But with that said, we've also had, you know, um, CrossFitters, for example, who have, uh, they have a lot of, um, repetitive use injuries. And, and one of the big ones for knees, which doesn't need to treat the, the, uh, the synovial fluid is, um, uh, patellar tendonitis. So the patella and the patella, patella connecting back to the tibia, um, really what you'd like to treat is the two ends of that tendon instead of treating the synovial fluid. So there are some kind of nuances from a treatment standpoint, but again, we're, we've, we've kind of designed these mostly for internal, uh, soft tissue treatment, I guess is the best way to say that. Got it. Okay. So, so ideally there would be a bit of uh, a thought process around, okay, what is the issue? Where is the particular, you know, the joint, the particular issue, you know, in, in the joint and, uh, thus changing the the positioning of the devices rather than just you know hoping for the best yes. um okay yes. so that's cool um so but then like you said it, it's not necessarily a knee product i mean you can use it for an elbow or a shoulder um joint but could you also just use it for i don't know like uh superficial surface level skin sort of shit like do people do that i mean if i had i don't know like i Burnt my ear really bad. Could I just hold it, you know, uh, next to my ear for five minutes? And and so it'll do. It does a couple of things. So we what where we've actually seen a lot of that is with um, post surgery recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, it increases the kind of uh, it, it improves the consistency and, and kind of alignment of collagen. So it increases the the uh, the amount of collagen proliferated to uh, scars and and kind of aligns it in a way that makes a scar. Uh, stronger and and more stable and less likely to be re-injured. So it, it improves the quality of the scar tissue by by quite a lot. Um, yeah. The other thing you can do with this is is uh, and I think just to take one one step back into your your previous question, we do have another product coming out uh, this summer, uh, which we're calling the Gut Plus. But it's it is smaller modules that where you can apply in, um, I guess matrices or or kind of arrays on yeah. different parts of your body. And it's going to be like really cool. And we'll have to get you out a, an early, uh, an earlier version of those with our beta guys, because you can apply these for internal tissue as well for your, you know, gut, gut microbiome. But we're also going to come out with a version in that same package in that same platform. Uh, we, we've had a lot of professional athletes who want to recover fat, who do, who put a lot of stress in their bodies. And so like they're doing, you know, they're squatting 500, 600 pounds or whatever, and they want to recover their, their quads, uh, the next day and be able to train again faster. And, um, having an array of those on your, on your quad and your strings just does that. It's, it's amazing. Well, that was one of the first, when I was playing around with it, when I unboxed it, um, yeah, obviously I put it in your, in the strap and I was like, oh, this is cool. But yeah, I, for me, like I do a fair bit of sports and, uh, I guess I don't have any major joint problems at the moment. So I'm thinking like, oh, you know, could I, could I hit the quads after a big row session or, or squat session? And, um, cause yeah, I was thinking you could just hold them on. But then I put them in the charging dock, which is really cool. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hopefully I can turn them on while they're in this dock and just, you know, like, because you've got all three, right? And of course, as soon as you um, put them in the, the dock, it, 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 and I was like, that is so possible. And yeah, one of the questions I was going to ask you is like, will, because you try to hold all three of them, it's just ridiculous. Uh, and then I was like, will you, um, you know, come up with a little device or a little docking thing? Because it is, it'd be the perfect little handheld, you know, spot treatment. Hit the quads, hit the hit the glutes, hit the back. Um, so that's cool to hear that. that. That was one of my little frustrations. So I'm I'm glad you're aware of that. Hey, and also I want to I want to change. Uh, I want to go down a different road here. So we've looked at like joint issues and you know rehab and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, what about performance? Like not necessarily recovery, but 
have you looked in the into the literature around like uh red light therapy you know for red light more in particular around um obviously you can atp uh production and whatnot but have you looked at the science around using it as a performance enhancer yeah there's some really good science around this and i can send you over a couple of papers um i was actually just writing up a, a uh kind of a so i might send you my summary with a few papers in there uh later today then sure. um essentially there's there's a couple of things that i think are um really interesting about this one is from a recovery standpoint um well to, let, let me answer the first part first so it, you you sound like you might be rowing over there. I, I do some rowing and, and assault bike for my conditioning stuff. And uh, we're doing testing with this because there are early medical trials on extending the time to fatigue. So uh, if you row, you know, if you're doing a, you know, uh, five or 10,000 meter um, time trial or something like this, uh, the the idea of be, being able to extend out the time to fatigue for your your quads or your lower back or your hips is pretty, pretty cool. So what I would say about that is that the literature is there's been, there are medical studies for this. They're very small. They're, they're on humans. It's not just animal, animal models, but there are, you know, human models for this. It's like 20 people at a time. It's, it's, uh, you know, uh, usually like trained rowers from a university or something like this, cause they're, they're easy enough studies to put together for these guys, um, is very interesting for us as well. So we, and we do a lot of kind of conditioning training for, um, for CrossFit and, and, uh, all of our team does. And so we're putting together and if, if you want to join, it'd be great to, to try it out with you as well. Yeah, uh, IFMC testing for this because it's it's very it's very interesting. It's very it's very attractive as well for us. I mean, it's like uh, this this assault bike or the rowing is going to suck less than a five thousand meter uh, kind of time trial. That that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's like I have a bit of a background in, in sports and and various sports and over the years, and uh, I still have a, a passion for it. Um, uh, in fact, I'm trying to break the the record, the New Zealand record for the five hundred meter, um, you know, the the sprint on on a rowing machine. Um, and I'm 35, right? So I know I, this could potentially be the last year to give it a go. I, I'm getting close. I got the 300 meter record, but I haven't got the 500 yet. But yeah, I've been looking into this stuff as well because typically I use my red light therapy devices for the recovery, right? You know, because I mean, it works. It's anyone that's used it, it's like, man, this is amazing. Um, but yeah, just recently we, we put up a blog uh, looking at, at red light therapy for sports performance. And yeah, it's there's, there's research out there. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that something's going on here. What was interesting, a lot of the research was using 810 nanometer light, which isn't super common in terms of, um, you know, the, the more consumer grade products. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been sort of looking at other products and, and thinking, hey, how I can use them because I mean, I'm at the point where I only need a few more percent performance increase to hit that record, right? So I'm like, what's, what's your 500 time? Uh, 116. One... <laughs> I gotta get another that is awesome. Yeah, man, I I got under one twenty one time, and it's it's it was already like you fall off, and you're just trying to trying to not. You feel like you're like getting a waterboarded because you just can't get oh, in the box. It's I mean I I did a lot of uh, crew like on the water rowing when I was a bit younger, and um, the two thousand meters is like a whole other world from a pain point of view. Like because someone was saying the other day, you should get back into the you know longer distance stuff, two, two k being longer distance, and I'm like that is hands down the most physically painful event you can ever do the amount of times i quit after doing like a, a race i you know you're, you're vomiting you, you just can't think and you, you say to your coach or whoever's there at the time you're like why am i doing that like no one's paying me to do that. it's ridiculous but the 500 meter like is you know it's a sprint it's a it's a very painful sprint a minute and a minute 10 minute 20 it's all out and it's just a lot of power uh, and then you just get to the end you're just holding on but it's good it gives me something to focus on and it gets me to experiment with with things like this you know it's a well, obviously I'm pushing the body quite a lot. I mean, I'm doing those five, five fifty kilo squats, you know, it's the 600, um, not kilos, sorry, pounds, uh, you know, you're, you're close to 600 pound deadlifts and that, like you're doing those big numbers. So you need, you need everything you can, uh, which, which it's not something I talk about much on, on this channel, but it, it obviously does help my research and help with the content I put out. So yeah, that's definitely something I'd be keen to see, uh, what you guys are up to. And, um, it is, I mean, it's a whole other world, isn't it? With you've got your your joint pain, you've got your muscle recovery, you've got performance, you've got brain health. Like, there's so much you can do with it. Um, that's why it's such a neat feel. So, so back to this device. Uh, another question I have about one of the features is pulsing. So you've incorporated pulsing in there. It's on by default. You can't turn it on or off or anything like that. Why have you used that? Well, firstly, what is the pulsing rate? Is it both near infrared and the red light, or is it just the red light? And why did you put it in there? 
Uh, it's both. And actually, we, we uh, digging in the literature, so we, we looked at a couple of things from um, our initial design. Uh, and we're at 35 hertz, um, which is not a very fast pulse, mm -hmm. but it was what we found both in the literature and both, both in the medical literature. And then also there's kind of a, there's some summary things like Walt, the, uh, the world association for, for laser therapy, uh, guidelines for this that we, we kind of started testing with, and then we put, um, physiological feedback loops in, and a lot of these, you, it's, it's almost impossible to test exactly Every, like every molecule that we're interacting with the outcome, the kind of downstream outcome for that, um, in the blood, but we, we found things that are heuristics like, um, or what we think of as kind of watershed, uh, metrics like nitric oxide in the blood. So when we see, like when we're, when we're seeing that we're influencing that more, we drag that across and make the assumption that we're actually impacting other things more effectively as well. And so, um, we did early tests with uh, higher frequency, uh, lower frequency, and then, but basically everything within those those kind of uh, what we found most effective. So there's a bunch of different kind of meta analyses with those forest plots on kind of what's what's been both effective and then what's moved the needle most uh, effectively. And so we kind of base ourselves on those, and then then kind of put a bracket around it from the the Walt uh, guidelines. And then in testing those, we just kind of dialed into to what worked the best with the feedback loop in, in place that we had. And so right. uh, I think it's, um, again, w one of the things that we're looking at over the, the near future as well is building in kind of real-time uh, sensors, sensor feedback loops for this, that you have almost a personalized dosing uh, kind of relative to what your physiology responds best to. But for until we have that, what we've done is we've done basically the best sweet spot that we have we have found. Yeah, right. That's pretty cool. That's quite interesting because yeah, I know it has been it's something that's sort of taken off in the the panel space, uh, and then it's become just like a standard feature now because I guess it's another it's another feature that that companies can put on their website, you know, when they're selling a product. But there's, there's a lot of uncertainty around it, and I've spoken to a few people, uh, researchers, and and, and very um, smart people who are working. Or using photobiomodulation for for brain disorders and whatnot, and um, I know they're a big fan of it, but it's more from an entrainment point of view, you know, the brain waves and stuff, right? So then, um, you know, I've also seen a lot of research showing that pulsing can be potentially beneficial if you're using really high powered lasers, for instance, and effectively it's it's um, you know helping with thermal buildup and thermal heat, uh, you know, thermal issues on the on the surface of the skin if you're trying to penetrate deep into the skin so that was another reason why it's used so yeah I, I didn't realize like when i first looked at your product before i received it on the website i didn't realize it had pulsing until i turned it on i was like oh that's that's interesting so yeah no, very um very cool um so i've, I've mentioned panels a few times now let's say someone ha is new to the, the world of red light therapy and all this and i don't know they've watched this video or they've come across your website and then they see like one of these uh a few liner, but you know your your hundred LED panels. Uh, and, and let's say they have that knee problem. Okay, um, how is a panel different, or how's your device different different to a panel? So one of the things that that um, that we've spent a lot of time on in the modeling is, uh, and and again, it's it's I think one of the reasons why you don't see the panels as much in um, in the medical literature uh, for these because the the dosing is just hard to quantify. Um, because the the inverse uh, square law, you're you're if you move forward or back a couple of inches, you're, you're changing the uh, quite a lot. Um, and the the uh, what we found with that is that it's hard it's hard enough to get people to dose these correctly when you're when you're able to put it at the skin level. Yeah. Um, but if you're if you're having to say like stay still, do not move for like you know X period of time, um, then it's gonna it's gonna make the it's going to provide too much friction for them. And if they're not getting the, you know, we, we don't really like to go bash other types of products because like mm -hmm. everybody should be considering something in a space because it's a great alternative regardless of what you're looking at for pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the, one of the problems that we've seen though is, is when people are looking at uh, kind of heterogeneous metrics, uh, they're like, Hey, this panel is, is a lot higher power. And you're like, you know, Yes, <laughs> but um, the 
the it's, it comes back to that kind of biphasic dose curve of like you don't necessarily need the higher power you don't need the bigger uh morphine shot you need what you need and that's that's kind of been our approach to this is let's let's make it as easy as possible to provide the most not kind of drop dead simple dosing um methodology that's going to get it to that that 90 percent uh mark for everyone and then we can use our kind of sensor technologies as we develop these out to, to provide that feedback loop in and also to validate for people that like here's the here's the actual um physiological adaptations that your body's making to this and so uh essentially it's just a dosing difference i i think uh, one of the things that that um that we we kind of uh the analogies that we use to that is um if you if you go to a doctor he's going to say like hey take this one pill a day um he's not going to say hey hold this hold this pill bottle you know three feet from your face and shake it and whatever falls in your mouth is the correct dose type thing so and I, I think that's a that's not exactly right as, as an yeah. analogy but it's close enough from a, a dosing standpoint yeah, it's it's you're much more targeted, much more precise. You're controlling a lot of those variables, and that is why you know, I get questions all the time. Hey, I've got this panel. How long should I use it for? And it's like yeah, it's in, there's so many variables. I mean, so many variables. You different wavelengths, the, how the LEDs are arranged, distance from it, you know, all that. And um, it's why um, I do you know for people that do have those specific treatments, yeah, a targeted device can be so much better. Have you looked into one thing I will mention though, with the panels, a lot of people are getting the systemic, you know, general health yeah. and wellness improvements, right? So, and that is something that's that's the real deal. I mean, there's, there's evidence to sh show that, yeah, mitochondria uh, across the body are benefiting from this. So could you use your device, for instance, on the wrist to, uh, to you know, for blood, um, you know, targeting the blood for the full body benefits? Is that, is that, Possible yes. and and our our uh, some of our biohacking friends have have gone a little step further and just put it on their kind of on their neck on the yeah. era they do yeah. that with um the methylene they'll do that in in concert with methylene blue um yeah. because there are some, uh um kind of synergies there and um you know it's a it's an aggressive uh treatment methodology but I, I feel like uh biohackers are similar kind of to to body type thing they're 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 willing to to go out on the the margins of what a lot of people would do from a, a, um, uh, a testing, a, a self-testing standpoint. So I, I would say, so what we, we did check on is the, the dosing that we're providing. If you're, if you're dosing your neck, it's okay. Uh, and, and it will trigger a number of things, a number of molecules, uh, into your blood across the blood brain barrier. Uh, it was not the first thing that occurred to me, <laughs> which it yeah. is, it is for biohackers or, or, you know, folks like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I've, I've done a few years bodybuilding, natural bodybuilding, and you know, I've been big in the biohacking space. And I mean, it's, it's what's built this channel and the brand and all that. it's like experimenting and asking those questions hey well can we do it this way and can we do it that way and that was yeah that's what i thought with this as well like if this is all you had and yeah you, you fix your knee and then it's like well what do i do with this now you could use it for the systemic benefits as well how i'm conscious at the time but i do have one other quick question so when so let's just go back a bit to the dosing because it still fascinates me here so let's say we've found that the 15 minutes uh on the on the joint you know for the knee is um let's run with the knee example again, is is what is optimal. I, I know we don't know for sure, but let's just say it is, right? Based on the wavelengths and all that we have. Could you then in theory come out with a second generation product that has double the power or triple the power? Let's say triple the power. I mean, does that mean that we can now, you know, reduce the treatment time? Is it as simple as that? Or is there a point where you say, look, no, if we go too high, it's just dangerous. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So, so a couple of things. One is um, when when so it would it would trigger some of the same things we found when we had. So when we had when we started these with this this product design, we had so we've got ten lasers on each uh, each module right now, mm -hmm. or each pod. Um, what we started off with was two, and we found that even with two, and they're not super high powered, they were already hot spotting too much, and so we re it reduced the kind of the surface level impacts we were having. So the the kind of uh, shallower tissue was being overdosed while the, we, it just doesn't balance correctly. And so what we found is that, you know, if, if we did do a, a different version of it, which we are actually, what we'll, what we'll likely do is, uh, additional wavelengths on these. Um, and so we're, we're, uh, so the gut version, for example, because we're treating less with the gut, we're treating less at the skin level. Mm -hmm. We're not really putting very much power for the, the, um, the red at all, but we have three different, uh, 
wavelengths of infrared. And so, like you noticed earlier, the the uh, the eight ten or eight oh eight uh, is a is a really uh, good wavelength. We we see most commercial products in the near infrared at an eight fifty, just because those parts are cheaper and easier to find. Um, the eight oh eight uh, we uh, eight and eight ten is actually more effective for what we've seen from our testing. But we're looking at, at for our gut product, for example, uh, 810, 905, and 1050 slash 1064. So we're still working on part selection on that. Um, but those those three actually, um, we can we can spread those out the same way we've done with the kind of 10, uh, 10 lasers on the existing ones, not hotspot, and target different depths and different kind of uh, molecule res reservoirs uh, for these photo acceptors. And we're still kind of playing with that to optimize it because it's again targeting deeper in for the gut. Um, the, the the problem for the gut, really, to be honest, is that it's it's uh, so there are some blood level uh, kind of time sequence data sets that we can get out of these, but they're not as meaningful as it is for like um, kind of uh, the nitric oxide, for example, for what we're treating for the the uh, the joints. And so we're still working around the correct finding the correct metric to put a feedback loop on that to make sure that we're delivering what we're what we're targeting and, and optimize for what we're, we're promising to deliver. Yeah, very, very cool. Hey, I really appreciate uh, your time and you know, well, everything you've shared with us. It's, it's been quite amazing. I've got a few things to go off and uh, think about and look into myself now. So for people watching, uh, where can they find more about your company, your product, and, and if they want to go order one, where should they head to? Uh, so if you want to order one or, or find out more about the products, uh, Kineon, K-I-N-E-O-N.io is our website. Um, and I'll, I'll also get you a link for our Facebook group. Uh, again, this is our, our first, um, direct consumer product company. My partner, Tom and I put our, our calendars out there. Anybody who wants to talk, anybody who's having a problem or anybody who has a question, uh, can book in time with us, uh, to, to have these answered. We want to make sure our mission really is to, to solve this problem, to be able to help people get out of pain and inflammation. Um, and so. Our Facebook group is a great place to go see different people's stories of, of the success in getting out of pain and inflammation that they've had. Uh, and I would I would suggest if you if you think it's snake oil or if you're or if you're just interested in more details about it uh, from a, a technology and physiology standpoint, come join us in the in the Facebook group and we're we're there all the time. We we do kind of Q and A's um, every month or two and and uh, let people call in and ask questions uh, because. Again, that's our mission is to to move the needle of quality of life for the largest number of people we can in the most substantial way we can. And we're we're all in committed for that. So uh come come connect with us. <laughs> very good, very cool. And I'll put links to everything we've talked about below as well. So hey, thanks again for your time. It's been awesome. And uh yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where you take the company, the product. I mean, obviously what you've created already is is quite unique and um Touch what I don't have any knee or joint issues in the near future, but I know it'll be uh, it'll be used, um, and I may even start like experiment, experimenting with it, you know, from, from a performance point of view as well. So, thank you again. I look forward to chatting in the future, and um, yeah, all the best and enjoy the rest of your day. Likewise, great questions, by the way, really, really insightful, and and uh, thank you so much for having us on. Hopefully, if you're if you're interested, we can get you on the beta program, and, and I'd love to talk to you, you know, more about this whenever you have whenever you have time. Yeah, no, totally. Okay, so that's a wrap. How impressive was Forrest? He knows his stuff, doesn't he? And and it just it shows through on the product, on the website, on what they're doing. I mean, you know, a lot of thought, a lot of time and energy has gone into creating something like this. It is obviously quite different to say a red light therapy panel, and we know panels provide exceptional results. However, something like this is going to provide a much more targeted and treatment specific uh, uh, modality, which is which is neat. I'm keen to play around with this uh, on a performance front and see if I can get a few percent uh, increases in, in some of my lifts and, and rowing times. So yeah, be sure to subscribe if you want to know more about that. And if you do have any questions for either Forrest or myself, leave them below. I'll make sure something gets back to you in time. And if you want to check out my own review of the Kineon Move Plus, now be sure to click here because in this video, I share my own impressions and review on this Kineon Move Plus Pro. It is quite a unique device and I highly recommend checking out that review.